Harris's day one was Donald Trump's failure on COVID that led to the collapse of our economy. The real family separation policy in this country is unfortunately Kamala Harris's wide open southern border. Well, two big moments from last night's first and likely only vice presidential debate. Governor Tim Walz spending a lot of time going after former President Trump, while J.D. Vance attacking the record of Vice President Kamala Harris. Now, they faced off in what was at times a contentious yet very toned down debate by debate standards these days. Both running mates making the cases for their candidate to be the next president of the United States. Joining us now to break down last night's debate, political strategist Ari Aramish. Ari, good to see you. How are you? Good to be with you. So a little over an hour and a half last night, uh, about 30 feet from where we're seated right now. Right. What was your big takeaway uh, for voters after having watched last night's debate? Uh, presidential debates don't matter, and vice presidential ma uh, debates matter even less. If, if they did matter, uh, Michael Dukakis would have been president after what Lloyd Benston did to, uh, to uh, uh, Dan Quayle in that debate. But... Again, the two men on, as, as running mates or anybody on the sort of um, on the second uh, name in the ticket, their job is to promote the policies and promote the person on top of the ticket. In the Democratic case, that would be Vice President Kamala Harris. In the Republican case, that would be former President Trump. Uh, you saw from the very get-go that Governor Waltz went after Donald Trump started, you know, sort of the attack and unleashed a number of criticisms against him. Uh, J.D. Vance was trying to define himself, and he did a pretty good job. I think they both came across more likable uh, than we had thought. And uh, overall, in terms of performance, well, J.D. is a lawyer. Governor Waltz, you know, has been in Congress and has been a... Yeah, governor for many years and, and, a, and a member of Congress for many years. So they both did pretty well. I think the biggest takeaway is this. They have increased their likables and their likelihood and, and their sort of uh, their negatives went down, their positives went up. So that's been good for both of them. And, and that was kind of the goal here, because obviously you don't want to do anything that's going to hurt the top name on the ticket. Um, and as you mentioned, affability, likability numbers, that was really what they were both trying to. And, and they both, I think, having watched for a little over an hour and a half, you, you come away saying, OK, you, you may believe one thing or you may believe the other. You may not agree with this, you may not agree with that. But they both came across as likable guys. You know, civility matters, and they came across as pretty civil in, in this election cycle. I think since 2016, we've had a pretty uh, poisonous, venomous cycle of election. Everybody, you know, sort of lock her up and lock him up, and a lot of personal attacks. Uh, I'm not saying previous cycles were not like this, but again, you know, in 2004, Bush and Kerry would shake hands. 2008, John McCain and President Obama would have, you know, a lot of mutual respect. Again, 2012, Romney, Obama. Uh, the, the 16, 20, and 2024 cycles have been pretty vicious. And it was nice to see the two men talk about the sub, uh, you know, substantive issues and substance and also shake hands. And I saw, you know, Governor Walz for many, many occasions, you know, would sort of extend credit to uh, Senator J.D. Vance, you know, say, you know, you're a nice man, you know, I agree with you on this and that. But I think both men came across as pretty civil. And again, we got a little substance out of, substance out of them on actual policy issues, which was which is something that usually is missing in presidential debates. Well, so, you know, the one thing that I think a lot of people noticed and the one thing that I'm seeing this morning in the reviews of last night's debate, the one thing that, that Governor Walls was able to do was draw on a lot of his experience in his state of Minnesota, whether it came to the economy, whether it came to health care, with Minnesota being top, top five, top three on, on a lot of those lists. What you didn't hear from the senator was a lot of what I have done for Ohio. Now, mind you, he's only really been in the political sphere for the last two years, but... It, Again, taking the, the, the top of the ticket out of it and just the two candidates running for vice president there, he seemed to have a lot more to draw on. You know, if I were to pick between the two men, I would like, you know, uh, uh, Governor Walz to be sort of, yeah, my governor, and I would like J.D. Vance to be my lawyer. <laughs> they, they did a pretty good job in terms of, you know, Governor, governor Walz came across as a likable, warm, Midwestern governor. I mean, this is exactly who he is, a family man, a sergeant major in the Army for years, a teacher. Uh, he was not, he's, you know, not a professional politician. J.D. Vance also doesn't have much of a paper trail. If anything, his Hillbilly Eulogy, the book that he wrote, is, is, is his biggest claim to fame. And his very few years in the U.S. Senate from Ohio don't really give him that much legislative or any, for that matter, executive experience. But again, uh, he's young, he's likable, he's got a beautiful family, and he came across as, listen, I may have... 
you know, very few years of experience as a senator, but I can formulate coherent sentences and I'm very articulate and I know things about substantive issues of policy. Yeah, he did do a very good job of prosecuting the case for, for Donald Trump and, and the views that he now, you know, again, they played sound and they played quotes of how he was kind of not on Team Trump earlier years ago, but has shifted his position and obviously now as his running mate has definitely shifted his position. I want to play some sound here from Senator Vance, who was asked point blank. This is the one big takeaway, I think, from, from last night's debate. He was asked point blank if former President Trump lost the 2020 election. And this was the response that's receiving a lot of criticism today. Did he lose the 2020 election? Tim, I'm focused on the future. Did Kamala Harris censor Americans from speaking their mind in the wake of the 2020 COVID situation? That is, a damning, to... that is a damning non-answer. Now, you know, as we know, this has been this is such a, uh, an unpopular um, when it comes to polling for you know, the Trump campaign right now to continuously deny the 2020 election results. It almost seems detached from reality. Why is there such a uh, an issue with just copying to the fact that you lost the election, obviously, four years ago? You're not sitting in the White House right now, so obviously you did not win. What, what, what's the disconnect there? Because I think a lot of people are just saying, well, why, why can't you just say you lost? Obviously, you lost. And you know, once you look at the most loyal, hardcore base of the Republican Party, the MAGA, the MAGA base, those people who actually show up, show up to rallies and they, they buy tickets and they buy hats and they buy t-shirts and they really think President Trump won that election and he was cheated out. He cannot, and today in this MAGA world, you have to, it's, it's a litmus test. You have to say there was irregularities. Not even that, you have to say that, you know, Trump didn't lose. And here's the thing. Uh, Republicans or Democrats, that sentence, that position weakens our republic. That is something that Ayatollah Khamenei of Iran and Vladimir Putin of Russia would love to promote. That look, this is American democracy. They cheat just like we do in Iran and we do in Russia. It is poisonous. It's venomous. And I think, again, January 6th compared to sort of some nefarious action that the Democratic Party took to try to censor Facebook, which is wrong, by the way, which is wrong. Yep. I am a big, big proponent of the First Amendment. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's very different to try to occupy the capital of this country. Um, you know, 150 officers getting hit, getting, getting, getting injured, people getting killed. And the office, office, office of the Speaker of the House, the second in line to, of succession getting ransacked. It is just something you don't want to see. It looks bad for us. It looks bad for America. And look. Very bad for President Trump. And the one thing that can be said after last night's debate is the CBS News YouGov polling, the immediate polling right after the debate, had J.D. Vance with a slight edge. 42% of the people voted said he won the debate. 41% said Governor Walls won the debate with the rest undecided. So, like I said, we talked about affability, likability numbers going up. It happened for both last night, so I guess you could say mission accomplished. Political strategist Ari Armish, thank you so much. Good to talk with you, and we will talk with you again shortly, I'm sure.